Hello everybody. Uh, this is a Christian Prince speaking to you. I just came from the space and I did the play for you all the voices I heard right there. Actually, I'm so glad that my microphone was working very good and I was able to record all those things. And not only that, I took selfie for you. Actually, yes, that's me in the middle. Absolutely. And uh, as you see, I was uh, holding a gun uh, made from gold. Uh, and the reason it's made from gold because in the space there's a lot of possibility to get your gun rusted especially I was really uh, you know fighting with the whale and shark in the space because yeah there are sharks in the whale and there's uh, I mean in the in the space and actually I'm not going to share too much stories with you because many of you will not believe in it but if I tell you a story coming from Allah you will believe it because my story doesn't make sense but the stories of Allah they are truthful and they are proven to be accurate scientifically actually uh, there is a very well-known doctor I told you it's 40 years 40 years I told you it's 40 years uh, this is from yesterday topics I can uh, today we will I told you 40 years and you are not listening uh, but today our topic is uh, 40 years I told you okay it's 40 years but we are talking about okay so I can I just hold on just, just play with the kids so today we will talk about star war and i hope uh, i will see some muslims uh, committing uh, uh, co committing yeah co committing yeah uh, my, my, this is my english uh, you can com co leave your comment in the text in the chat and let me know what do you think muslims if i say to you really that there is somebody he go to the space to spy And there is, I don't know how to tell you this, but it's a true story. Hmm. Now, I think, I think in order to tell you the story, we have to do some uh, kind of, uh, you know, like in schools, they use like images, videos for education purpose. And as long as this is a necessity, then we have to find something. You know, when I was in the space, I saw many things. And for sure, Allah, he was able to make me see them. And actually, when I was there, I had a fight with one of the genies. Actually, I took a picture with him for him. This is my phone. Okay, this is from my phone. Uh, he was big, you know. Actually, no, this is his. Uh, this is the guy who was. No, this is the guy who was next to him. Uh, this is the one I was like. Uh, uh, yeah. No, actually, this is the one who was giving him rocks to throw at me. What is the other one? Hold on. Yeah, no, this is the one. Yeah, no, this is. Yeah, this is the one who was lighting fire. Okay, hold on. Anyway, uh, I, I, will, I will find it. I took too many pictures of them because they are a tribe. There's a tribe. You believe it? There's a tribe of genie. And all of them, they want to fight with me when I went to the space. I mean, and imagine Christian Prince is fighting all those guys alone. Uh, for sure alone. I mean, <laughs> Who's going to be with me in the space? You don't believe me? Actually, the the donkey I took to the space can carry only one person. If you don't believe that, I was alone. So anyway, this genie here, here we go. This is the genie I was fighting with. Yeah, this is him. Hmm. I was walking and uh, you know peacefully. You know me, I'm a very peaceful person. And, uh, you know, like walking down street, la 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 in the space. And then suddenly, a guy, he stand and he start like he have a fire in his hand. And he said to me, it doesn't say that, CP. I said, what the heck, even here? And then he throw fire at me. 
and then this guy he appear and look like this guy he sent the first guy and I was saying to myself I mean how I'm going to fight those and they are very tall I'm very short you know I'm not even 20 meter tall you know this guy is like a, a, a 20 kilometer tall you know compared I mean 20 meter to 20 kilometer I mean there's a huge difference it's like there's two centimeters between us according to the Arab mathematics so I, I was saying to myself how I'm going how I'm going to fight someone like this I mean it's so big so big you know and he's so huge but then I remember the story of a Prophet Muhammad. When a genie, he come to him, Shaitan, and he started acting crazy, trying to disturb his prayer. The Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, he have a black belt. Actually, not only black belt, he have all the belts in the world, especially after he killed the Jews, he took their belts anyway, because this is where they used to keep the money. Prophet Muhammad, he got the genie, he did beat him, and he tied him up to the column of the mosque. I said to myself, if Muhammad can do it, I can do it. As simple as that. I mean, I have all the requirements. He's an Arab, I am an Arab. Hmm? Uh, he have 13 wives, I have 13 wives. I mean... Uh, I mean, like, okay, okay, 12. Don't look at me like that. Okay, 11, 11, okay, and uh, 10. Come on, okay, 9, 9. Okay, I am single. Okay, I, this, in this scenario, I cannot really beat Muhammad. But, you know, if you have more wives, you will get more weak because you are busy all night doing boom, boom. You know, so I'm like, I'm, I'm just uh, ready for a fight. I mean, I wasn't busy doing anything at night, right, you know? So if a prophet Muhammad can do it and he have 13 wives, well, I can do it and I don't have, uh, you know, any, uh, so it's easier. Hello? Anyway, so I learned, you know, when I was on Earth, before I go to the space, because, you know, before you go to the space, uh, you have to pre prepare yourself, you know, like you see those uh, people from NASA, they prepare them, you know. Uh, if you remember the story where Allah, he sent two, uh, two angels and they catch at the chest of the prophet Muhammad, uh, from here to here, I don't know if you remember the story. And then uh, they install a dish of uh, 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 beans. Uh, no, not beans. Sorry, rice. No, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm losing my memory. Uh, they install a dish of wisdom. Sorry, a dish of wisdom, and uh, uh, you know, and faith in his uh, uh, in his chest, and for sure. Uh, that can help you to overcome any size of genie big genie small genie big it doesn't matter you know so in my case i did not do the surgery for like uh, uh, you know faith and wisdom uh, but i did different surgery you know uh, you see like i met someone he told me he is a doctor and he told me he can make me the most powerful man on earth. And I told him, okay, can you tell me how? He said, we will do a very simple thing. You eat spinach. And since then I eat spinach. And then he showed me an uncle, he's an Arab guy, Uncle Papai. And I start eating spinach. So the Prophet Muhammad at his time, there was no spinach because he lived in the desert. So you cannot ask him to eat spinach to be like very strong. So in his case, the angel have to cut his chest and take all everything off and like change the battery, change the, I mean, everything. I mean, obviously everything there is, is garbage, you know? So he, he took everything off and then he replaced it with dish of gold, uh, sorry, he brought dish of gold full of faith and wisdom. And this is very important, by the way, to have a dish of faith, because if you don't have faith, you cannot uh, have faith in winning. You know what I mean? And if you don't have wisdom, I, you know how you can fool the, uh, the you know the thing that that thing you know, you know the, the thing there you know. So anyway, this is a true story, and uh, you know uh, so I decide to follow the uh, footsteps of Prophet Muhammad.
the Muslims giving me for dislike. Why? I mean, what I did. I'm I'm just showing you what is there. I did not even start yet. I'm just talking about myself. Anyway, anyway, let us go back uh, to the topic. I don't know how old are you guys, but most of you, I think, are very young. Eh, I think the late the ladies in the chat, I think they are age in the average between sixty and eighty. You know, ninety nine point nine percent of them. And the, the the guys in the chat, they are you know young, six years old, you know. But you know, remember that Arab guys they get mature very easy in the age of six. Uh, you know, women it take them very long. You know, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, why I'm not talking about the age of the ladies here? You know. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, all ladies here are very young. Yeah, my, my mom is 17, by the way, just to let you know. Uh, any, so anyway, uh, I'm trying to tell you the story, the bend, the bend in your age, you know, because the ladies now here are very old and the guys here are very young, like me and Dom, like, you know, all of us, we are young. So uh, I'm going to speak first to the old and then I will speak to the young to fit with their age, you know, like to make it easy to be understood. So let us go with the old first. There was a genie, a big genie. And with the genie, there's many genies, a lot of genies. The world of genies. Genie in the ball. Genie out of the ball. Genie in the sea. Genie out of the sea. Wet genie. Dry genie. All kind of genie. Absolutely. Call us at 1-800-GENIE. We send free shipping and handling to any kind of genie, any size you want. Thank you. Okay, what well, this is what the commercial, uh, you know, this is not a story, actually. This is a commercial, but we, like, you know, Rush Lumbo have to make commercial between, uh, you know, the pro in the program. So we, like, uh, uh, this is what the commercial, okay? So uh, if you're interested to uh, export, import uh, genie, you know, call 1-800-GENIE, uh, okay? Uh, remember, you know, you have to pronounce the word genie correctly. Like, don't uh, don't think it's Gina. You know, you will be in trouble because, you know, Gina is a teenage. They will say you are calling girls and, and their age. Be careful, okay? So, 1-800-GENIE, okay? And and let me spell it for you. K-A-O-Y-Kiwi. Okay. So, now we, we knew how to pronounce genie. All right. So, uh, uh, okay, supposedly I will start telling you the story about the genie for the old first. All right, let us start with the, uh, uh, the old uh, theory. Because, you know, for, I mean, you cannot deliver the same story in the same way for old and young. You know, all the women here, the ladies are very old. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get killed by women say, uh, sooner or later, you know, for saying that. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so anyway... Uh, here here we go I'm going to tell the story for the ladies a genie female she lost her lipstick and she was wondering who took it she decided to investigate she could not find an answer. She decided to go to the sky to spy at the angels because the angels, they can see everything. Maybe. Yes, baby. Maybe they can tell her the one fit for your nose and the one fit for your toes. And don't worry about the price. 
it's very 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 convenient you can buy from Mimi hijab the one he said it always when he is in his car it says buy this sister it's very 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 healthy thank you so this genie female who lost her lipstick and she wanted to find who took the lipstick she decided to do a very dirty trick she want to spy at Allah okay now we told you the story for the old now it's time to tell it for the kids all right there was a beautiful zini and as you see she covered her uh, private uh, stuff with lemonade she have red hair and she lost her lipstick so she decided to find who took it. Then she decided to fly to the sky. She took a flying carpet, by the way. Some people, they say she took a broom. And she went to Allah, so Allah will tell her who took the lipstick. But because she is not wearing clothes, she cannot meet Allah. So she decided to spy at Allah. Come tomorrow and we will tell you more about the rest of the story, kids, because now it's time for you to sleep. Mommy and daddy, they will be home soon and you will be in trouble if you don't go to sleep. However, if you are a good kid and you like to buy something from us, call 1-800-CHOCOLATE from Genie. They are the best. They will drive you crazy and you will make you act and hyper like a genie. Thank you very much. Now, okay, okay. Uh, I think uh, I, our story is very convincing. I'm, I'm not sure why people are not really believing. Uh, what's wrong with people? I mean, isn't it obvious? It's true. What's wrong with you? Hmm. No respect for reality. No respect and nobody want to grow up. All of this is proving to be true. Eh, at least there is one or two in the crowd. They believe me. Finally, <laughs> it's time. It's about time, isn't it? Now we let us go and see a story made by a prophet. Uh, did I say made? No way. It's uh, it's not made. It's true. The prophet said last night. You see the Muslim here. They translate the word genie as a demon. That's a lie. Muslim don't believe in demons, so don't make them fool you. Muslims and Islam do not believe in demons, so don't mix between genie and demon. Genie, according to Islam, are made from fire and they can have sex. And they have uh, even a penis, and they have a, a vagina, and I, the female they have boobs. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. So the prophet said last night, a shaitan, a freet, a freet, a freet, a freet, and from the genies, come to me. And he tried to disturb my prayer, but Allah gave me the power to overcome him. And I intended to tie him to the one of the pillars of the mosque till the morning so that you, you could see him. But, but at the last second, but I remembered the stated statement of my brother Solomon. So Solomon is your brother. Okay. My Lord, forgive me and bestow on me and kingdom such as shall not belong to any other after me. What does this have to do with this story? So here Muhammad saying that a genie he came to him when he was playing, uh, sorry, praying, not playing, and uh, uh, he tried to disturb him, and the prophet he overcome him, and he you know here it says minhu, which means he was able to really hold him. This is why now he is thinking about tying him up. He is holding him, but you know. As I know, Muhammadan, according to the Quran, you cannot see a genie. He is invisible. This is why his name is a genie. 
Jini is the word jinn, the word jinn. In Arabic, it's coming from Janin. What is Janin? Janin is the embryo, like, you know, the baby in the womb. So he is unseen. He is there, but we cannot see him. So the genie is an invisible creature. How Muhammad was able to hold in him and he wanted to tie him up? Isn't it? This is what the Quran is saying in chapter 7, verse number 27. And here, this verse in the Quran, <clears throat> saying clearly that nobody can see genie. However, it's so clear that Allah, in this verse, He predicted what is called night vision glasses sensor so we can see so obviously prophet muhammad was provided with one of those ability he was able to see the genie even the quran saying nobody can see the genie hmm. However, the Quran mentioned too that the genie, they are really bad. But some of them, they are Muslims and they converted to Islam. But the bad ones, they always try to spy at Allah. And that here take us to the age of the KGB and CIA, how they spy at each other. Spying was really a very old business. It is not something new. And as you see, even the genie they spy. how we can ignore such a fact that the genie they have CIA too, CIA department, and their purpose is to collect information so they can use it against you or against us. This is one of the genie, he is holding his back and he is entering the CIA department. Here, there is other genie. He is trying to say, I know what you are speaking in private. And here, this is a meeting for a bunch of genie in the CIA. Thank God my picture is not there. And here, actually, it was the birthday of one of the genie. Her name is Gina, you know. Uh, but anyway, we're in the Quran, it says that shaitan tried to spy. Genie is a shaitan. And how Allah, he stopped the shaitan from spying at him. According to Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. Before he became a prophet, Genie was able to spy at Allah. When the angel received command from Allah, the angel they speak to each other, the shaitan, he hear it. They go all the way to the heaven. They hear the conversation. They carry the news and they add lies to it and they spread it around. And this is how the business of the CIA works. As an example, the Muslim they mention for you this verse in the Quran saying, Don't you know that the atmosphere mentioned in the Quran 
and this is why the earth is protected we open the verse for you, verse for you. chapter 21 verse number 32 there is a long article about this look brother Allah he mentioned the atmosphere and we have made the heavens as a canopy will guard it yet they turn away from our signs and the Muslim they made an article how Allah knew about the atmosphere and blah blah but this is not about the atmosphere this is about shaitan he tried to go to the sky Allah he shot his ass and the proof here in front of you and we have guarded them from every chorus devil chorus devil guarded what the sky Allah too by the way believe in the zodiacal signs as you see but any that gain hearing by stealth by stealth is pursued by a flaming fire Allah he is the first one who start Star War and not only that by the way he made the earth flat as you see here in the verse after it which is confirming the science of Allah because yes the current earth is a flat isn't it it says well ardu madadnaha walqayna fiha rawasi we made it like a carpet now why shaitan he is trying to spy at prophet muhammad prophet muhammad always he show a lot of wisdom and we have to be honest here once a person he asked prophet muhammad why we see stars falling down uh, in the sky Muhammad he gave them the answer and the answer was Quran chapter 67 verse number 5 and we have adorned the lowest heaven with lamps and we have made such a lamps as missiles to drive away the evil ones by the way it doesn't say evil ones it says shayateen satans so what the purpose of the lamps which we see falling down is to drive away the shaitan the shaitan he tried to spy allah he shoot him by a star now, if we go in the hadith, we will find Muhammad making it most, more clear for us. It says that the genies, when they try to snatch news, hmm? the genie, look there, they do, they snatch news from the sky. They reach the heaven and they try to snatch news, you know, to, 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 to hear, to spy. And they try to hear what the angels saying to each other, the angels who they are under the throne of Allah, seeking information from them until this information reached the heaven of the world. In this process of transmission, the jinn snatch what is what he managed to overhear and he carries, carry it to his friends. And when the angels see the genie, they attack them with stars. What meteor? Doesn't say meteor. The Quran says it clearly lamps. And that a very scientific explanation for what we see in the sky at night. The genie makes sense. The genie come at night, trying to spy at Allah. He get a closer. He get a closer and closer and closer, and he start. Hearing the angels talking and he is listening and he is writing down the information 
and he transferred the information to his friends and he tell them which mean I got it and then the angels after all they notice him and they start shooting at his ass like beer 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 and this is why you notice that shaitan he have a red ass actually this is why I believe Shapanzi is a shaitan he's one of the shaitan who tried to spy at Allah Now who in the world can deny the wisdom and the true stories of the Prophet? And look here, if you are a Muslim, you don't believe, you want to say to me, this is weak. Here we go. This is Sahih Muslim. This is what? Sahih. Let me say it to you in the genie language. Muslim. See? Here we go. So this is story. mentioned by your prophet and it is authentic and I want to know how in the world any human being don't want to believe in the stories of Prophet Muhammad is not it clear that he is a true prophet I mean who can make stories better than him I mean tell true story let's not make up you know this is a true story hmm? We cannot deny it. I mean, the truth is in the front of you. Prophet Muhammad, he is sharing information which no one knows. And I was wondering what this, you know, we see in the sky. What is that? You know, it turned to be that this is shaitan. Allah is beating his ass for he is trying to spy at Allah. And it's very logical. Do you want Allah to let shaitan spy at him? No way. And get away with the information? Absolutely not. So what Allah do? The second he say shaitan, carrying the information, Allah he shoot him by a star. But the, the strange Prophet Muhammad did not tell us what happened after that. I mean, do shaitan get injured? He fell down. What happened exactly? Okay, he shot. You know, they shoot him by the star. Okay, and and what after that? If there is any Muslim have any comment in that chat? <clears throat> If there is any Muslim have any comment? Hmm. Interesting. All of you Muslim believe in those stories? So if today somebody he came to you and he tell you that those things we see in the sky they are because Allah is shooting let us say you never heard this before and somebody from the middle of nowhere he told you I'm a prophet and this is the reason for those things you see in the sky you believe him or we chose just because it's Muhammad whatever Muhammad he say we take it that's it hmm? And the funny that Muhammad claimed that after Allah he sent him as a prophet, Shaitan he cannot spy anymore. Which means uh, here Allah is shooting uh, at, the, at the Shaitan. This is something new. You know what I mean? Before Muhammad came to earth as a prophet, Shaitan he used to be able, not only one Shaitan, all Shaitan. I mean, there's many of them. His cousins and the cousin of the cousin, I mean the whole familia from Italia. 
like Tony and the Bambinos, they go to the Sky Nino and they start to spy Eno at Alanino and then they give information you know, and then they bring it to, to Eno and uh, here we go, uh, Eno is going to be in the scene in Eno. So Allah Eno, you know, he allowed the all spy Nino for all this time until Prophet Muhammad Eno's come to the earth Eno. You know. And this is story, you know, is absolutely true story, you know. I mean, who in the world can deny that this is true? If you are, if you are not a Muslim yet, you have to take shahada immediately. Look, high tech technology, lamps, missiles, drive away. What do you want? Blazing fire. I mean. All the the element of a Star War is exist in this movie. Hmm? Do we have any Muslim bambino in the chat? You know? Do you want to say it doesn't say that CP? You know? Hmm. <clears throat> Any Muslim? <laughs> True story. I mean, pfft. and you know, I, the, the funny, uh, when you read the Quran, you see no connection between the verse before and the verse after. Look at this. Okay, here Shaitan tried to spy Allah at Allah. Allah, he shoot missile at him. Okay, what the verse after it have to do with that story? And what the story after it have to do with that story? And what the verse after it have to do with that story? Eh, that is Quran, you know. It's made for the crazy, you know. Hmm. Any Muhammadino? And you know, the Muslims, they went uh, uh, like far with their fantasy because their prophet, he told them that Shaitan, he had babies. Yes, Shaitan, he had babies. But how Shaitan, he had babies? You know, the Muslims, when they read the Quran, they get confused. As usual, in the Quran is a book of confusion. Uh, Allah in the Quran says that the Muslims, they are going, or the, the people, they, uh, they are going to follow Shaitan and his uh, uh, children's. All right. So the Muslim they could not understand how Shaitan will have babies. So what we would do? Any Muslim knows the solution? What we will do now? Allah He said that are you going to take Shaitan, Iblis, the father of all Satan's? Are you going to take him as God? And 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 follow his children. The Muslim, when they see this, saying that the Quran, saying that Shaitan he have a children's, and this is not metaphorical. They come with the solution. Now, for sure, the solution is coming with Muhammad. You know, Muhammad is a solution for everything. Muhammad, he come with a solution. That Shaitan, when uh, Allah created him, there was no female, you know, he was just a genie, a male genie. But Allah, he created for the genie, for the Shaitan, a male private part and a female private part. 
in the same time. Okay. Too bad I cannot show you this video. Because you will die laughing. There's a video in front of me, but I cannot play it. You know, they will they will say copyright, you know them. Let us see. Let us show you some Islamic education. So they cannot say we are making things up because you know we show it in the screen and they say it doesn't say that. See, this is in Arabic, but we will use Google translation. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. Translate. Mm -hmm. It's not translating. All right. Uh, Allah, he says, are you going to take him and his offspring as a guardian, except of me, without me, blah, blah, blah. And then they are saying here, uh, yeah, you see here the translation of Google is very funny. Uh, they ask a person, uh, a scholar, about how shaitan he have children. He said, this is a wedding party I did not witness. And then he mentioned saying, don't take uh, him and his offspring. And then he says, that shaitan, the devil, Allah, he gave him a vagina and a penis. So in order to have, uh, uh, you know, sex, he shake his legs. So this enter that translation here is kind of very funny. So he uh, uh, his private part in the in the right leg, which is the penis, enter in the left private part, which is the vagina, and then he lay five eggs, and this is the origin of his offspring. Now, this is, by the way, proving to be true. That shaitan, he have a penis, and he have a vagina in, in his body, uh, the penis, and you look here, the wisdom of Allah is amazing. You see, if Allah, he put the penis in the front and the vagina in the back, it's going to be impossible for shaitan to do it to himself. So Allah, he come with a solution. So he put, he put the penis in the right leg, in the, in the right thigh, and then the vagina is just facing it. So all what he need to do is just shake his legs. Like open, close, open, close, open, close. So this is how shaitan, he have sex with himself. And then after he do that, he lie, he lay down five uh, five eggs. Uh, and then they say, some they say, it is 10 eggs, as you see. So he have, Allah, he created him, Allah the Almighty, created for him in his right thigh, a male member, and in the left uh, uh, thigh is a, a vagina. Is it, uh, I mean, even in go, stupid Google translation is shown, right? Guys, can you, is it, is that, is the text clear? Is the text clear from your side or you can't read it? Give, give me one if you can read it, please. Otherwise, I have to draw it for you. I like, don't force me to do that. Is the text clear?
Do you see it? It says uh, Allah the Almighty created for him in the right thigh a male, uh, 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 you know, here the translation is not telling the word correctly, a male private part, and in the left, uh, you know, vagina. So what he do in order to do, uh, you know, he shake, you know, his, you know, he shake his legs and he enter this into that. And then he lay 10 eggs and every egg released from him every day, 10 eggs every day and come from every egg of it, 70 shaitan and shaitana, which means devil, male and female. Look, 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 look. So only the first shaitan is male and female in the same time. After that, the baby eggs, he laid down 10 eggs. And by the way, the eggs of shaitan are big. You know, I, I remember once I ate one in the breakfast. You know, it was really, really big. I mean, a very huge. True story, you know. All right. Hmm. We better drink a lot of water after we make a big lie. <clears throat> so, brother and sister, shaitan, brother, like imagine I'm Prophet Muhammad now. Okay? And I am telling the Muslims the truth. About how Shaitan he got his babies. Um, this is amazing. This is so beautiful. Man, this Shaitan is something. He do not need to go to dating women, looking for a female. I mean, he is the male and he is the female. Self-sufficient. And then he lay down eggs. I mean, why eggs? Do you think Shaitan was a chicken? Hmm. So anyway, uh, the one who said that is the scholar. He is saying, I did not see that, but the story says this. So he did not witness such a wedding. They're asking him, uh, how Shaitan have children? Because the Quran says, have a children. So they are asking him, uh, oh, how shaitan he have a children? Do he have a wife? He said in his answer, this is a wedding I did not witness. <laughs> but, but shaitan, which means there's no wedding there. There's nobody getting married. They're asking him, do, do, do he have a wife? Hmm? You see here it says, you cannot have offspring unless you have a wife. Right? But shaitan don't have a wife. So where he got the babies? The answer is very simple. Allah created for him in the right thigh a male private part and in the left side, a left leg or thigh, he created for him a vagina. And then, uh, you know, after he do boom boom to himself and then he have orgasm, then he laid down 10 eggs and from every egg 70 satan and female and male satan come out and for sure this is a true story you know right i mean nobody can really deny this it's proven this is always a proven to be scientifically accurate and uh, 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 don't ask me where Muhammad got those stories from because first we are not allowed to ask questions especially if they are embarrassing you can ask questions in Islam like uh, brother is that okay to shave my underarm brother in a second everyone who call himself a scholar want to give you advice the Prophet said the brother about shaving underarm the following but when it's come to ask serious questions shut up Hmm. I'm really convinced with this. By the way, even genies they agree. Yeah, see, yeah, genie. They said yes. This is true. I, 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 I witness. He said Chahada too.
And even the information Prophet Muhammad received, it was not like anyone. Prophet Muhammad, he used to receive the revelation of Allah in a sound of a, a bell. And that made him really very special. Because why Allah speaking to Muhammad in a sound of a bell? I will explain to you what does that mean. But I, I, I want first, uh, I want you to think with me about this. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Prophet Muhammad saying, after somebody asked him, how does divine inspirations come to you? He replied, in all these ways, the angels sometimes come to me with a voice which resembles the sound of a bell. Hmm. Now, if you think about it, uh, that make Muhammad the first bell messenger if you know what I, I mean this is supposedly was inspiration from Allah and here I have a question for the Muslims. The Quran says that Allah, He never sent the messenger unless He speak the language of His people. What? 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 Allah, He sent His revelation to the Prophet from the people who speak the language of the people so He can make it clear for them. Do you see it? Chapter 14, verse number 4. Now, based on this, if Muhammad he received the Quran in a sound of a bell, that means Muhammad was sent to the bell nation. As an example, Billy Clinton. Isn't it amazing, brother? I mean, how this guy, how he say that he received the Quran in a sound of a bell when the Quran says we send it to them in their language so they might understand. Based on this, Muhammad, he must be sent to a nation who they have no other language except the sound of a bell. What is driving me crazy, brother? How the sound of the bell translated into Arabic if Allah he gave him revelation as a sound of a bell how Muhammad made it Quran in Arabic that can be solved if we think about the following technology Exactly, brother. I told you, it's for the earth. Uh, uh, what? It's for the earth, I told you. No, oh, 40 years. Okay, I give up. So look what we have here. We have genie, have a penis, have a vagina. We have a genie want to spy at Allah. We have Allah shooting the genie at his ass using stars. We have a prophet receive Quran in the sound of a bell. We have people who don't speak the language of the bell, but yet they can understand the language of the bell. We have a Muhammad who received it in a language, but yet he delivered in different language, which means he's a recycling machine. All of this is high technology of the almighty Allah. That's a lot of wisdom, brother. Huh? 
I don't know how in the world you people don't believe in Allah yet. Especially if you are Indonesian from Indonesia. By the way, Indonesian, and uh, there's a lot of Indonesian in Indonesia. I just told you a prophecy, by the way. Nobody knew that. Here we go. I will become a prophet now. How I know that? I mean, the Indonesian Muslims, they were guided by Allah to the point they were praying for more than a thousand years to the wrong direction of Mecca. And no Allah, no one guide them until the GPS of the American come to be true. One thousand year, the Muslim in Indonesia, they are praying to Somalia, thinking that this is the direction of Mecca. Hmm. And by the way, I will tell you another prophecy about Indonesian people. Not only they are Indonesian, but they are Asian. I'm telling you. But you know, I don't like to brag about my knowledge and etc. I mean, I am. I prefer to be humble. You know. Pro this is a prophecy. This is a prophet. Good. This is a prophet. Look at this. Prophet, he received Quran in the sound of a bell. And the funny Muhammad, he said that the sound of the bell is the instrument of shaitan. I mean, how you say such a thing, and you said before that the bell is the instrument of shaitan. I mean, is this man, is he crazy or what? The Prophet said the bell is one of the musical instrument of shaitan. So how the bell is a sound instrument of shaitan and you receive Quran as a sound of a bell? Uh, Shanky, will you are Shanky, my friend? Can you show me where in the Bible it says the earth is a flat? It's a challenge for you. Otherwise, everybody will be laughing at you. Actually, the earth in the Bible says it clearly it is in the shape of a globe. And that is showing everybody that you are a dummy and you are a fool. Who knows where in the Bible it, sh it says that the earth is in the shape of a globe? Who want to tell this dummy, Shanky, and get him busted? Who want to post the verse for us? This is the only book who written thousands of years ago took the human being thousands of years to find out that the earth is not flat when in the Bible it says that the earth is in the shape of a globe. You never heard of this uh, shanky potato? Stupid idiot. And you earn the word stupid with, with the uh, uh, you know, for, uh, for you see how stupid you are four corners of the earth this is a, a, a figure of a speech until now they use it until now you go to the most big university in the world they use most famous famous author they use the four corners of the earth this is about that everywhere that is your stupid idea because when we speak about a map or etc so we say the four corners of the earth this is a figure of speech. But the Bible is so clear. Actually, the Bible is the only book who says that the earth is hanged on nothing, which means the first book ever discovered that the earth is hanged on a space. Space on nothing. Many Muslims have an answer for what we are saying. Muslim King debate want to talk. Where is Muslim King? He's in Skype. Muslim King is a kid. This Muslim King. He called me many times before. He's a, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Can we find... I mean, can't we find somebody he, he know he, at least what he's talking about? Muslim King. Let us open Skype and see if there is any Muslim would like <clears throat> to give us a call. 
Text me please and I will call you. Text me, don't call me and I will call you back. Because we don't want too many people to call at the same time and that will make us lose our connection or unable to talk to everybody. Where is the Muslim king uh, hero? Actually, when he called himself a Muslim king, that is a proof that he is not a Muslim. Because a Muslim, he don't call himself a king. According to Islam, kings are bad. Because that's me, he's a kid. Any Muhammadan? And by the way, when somebody says to you, I blocked his name, that is another proof of being an idiot because he can just create a new name for free and call me back, even if I blocked him. It's a false excuse. But usually, I block only people who they are kids. I'll give you a chance. I spoke as an example. There's a guy, his name is Abbas. Abbas, he called me. If I say a hundred, two hundred times, I will not be exaggerating. But then I don't want to talk to this guy no more because we spanked him more than enough. I mean, this guy became the joke of everybody in the, in the, in the speaker corner. I'm not going to talk to him anymore. Either you bring me someone who knows what he's talking about. Yeah, we answer you about the four, four corners of the earth. You see, the stupidity is amazing. When you say four corners of the earth, does that mean that the earth have corners? Or this is a direction? This is a figure of speech. Everybody use it until now. So that, that's a lie. Secondly, we showed you from the Bible, it says that the earth is in the shape of a globe and hanged on nothing. And not only that, in the book of Revelation, you will see that how God, the Lord, when he come, somebody will be in the field and somebody will be asleep. Mentioning the difference of timing between whereas some places will be day and some places will be night. So when you speak about the Bible, my friend, you have to mention that this is a book. You don't take a phrase and make a story out of it. We know, we know what Revelation says. You, you can post it. Who is holding you, Mr. Shanky? Why you don't post it? <laughs> and why you don't want to post too the the verse where it says that the the the, the Earth in a in a in a in a shape of a, a globe? Here we go. This is the verse. Just to show you how stupid you are. And after those things, I saw the four angels standing in the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, and the wind should not blow uh, on earth, nor in sea, nor in any tree. First of all, you eat it. This is a book of Revelation. This is a vision. Secondly, this is about the coming of the Lord, which means there's no escape for anyone. The angels of the Lord will be in the all direction of the earth. Which means the whole earth will be under the control of the Lord. This is judgment day. So you are a stupid. First of all, this is a vision of revelation about something will happen in the future. And this is not about corners. This is about God. You see, when you want to debate somebody, you debate him about what he believes, not what you think. When I debate Muslims about what is in the Quran, I show them what their prophet said about it. Not my own interpretation. You, because you're an idiot, you try to find something. From in the whole book, you could not find except this. Okay, so what we will do now with the with the verse saying the earth in a, in a, in a shape of a spear or a spear, a, a globe. 
and the earth is hanged on nothing. So that one is we we don't talk about it, right? You know this 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 is the one. Here you will see dragons. You will see this is this is the book of Revelation. This is something will happen in the future. It's a prophecy. This is not about corners of the earth. This is about God controlling the whole earth and nobody going to escape from his judgment day. Stupidity is amazing. Any Muslim? Anyone? Any Muhammadan? <coughs> Nobody? You know, uh, you know, you see, when somebody, when you debate a, a person, you debate him about his belief, not what you think. It's very stupid to say, I believe this verse saying that, because you can believe as you wish, but you are debating me about my belief. Can you show me one is Christian interpretation saying that the earth is flat? Can you show me? You see, Christianity has existed for the last 2,000 years. Can you show me one Christian book written about the Bible is accepted by the Christians? Interpretation of the book saying that we Christians believe the earth is flat? You cannot. So you are making your own stories. Let us see, we have people texting. Don't you want to mention? Maybe I spoke about that. Yeah, somebody is posting for me Isaiah 40 15 about the atom mentioned in the Bible. My friend, I don't care really if the Bible mentioned about the atom, nuclear, or even the earth is, a, is, a, is a, a, in a globe because you know I don't read the book. To learn about science i read the book to learn about god because if you are a christian and you say i believe in science well science doesn't say that a man he can be born of a virgin as simple as that so if you are trying to prove to me that uh, you know uh, you believe in science we christian i'm not against science but we believe in miracles too and miracles have nothing to do with science If you are a person believe in science, then you will not believe that Jesus, he put some mud in the eyes of somebody and make him see. Right? That's, that's not science. So for us, you know, when we speak about the Messiah making miracles, if you can prove that this is a lie, go ahead and prove it. And the funny, those who they are atheists, they believe in something called the Big Bang, which is a theory. I mean, it's a theory. Let, let, us, let us discuss this as, as the following. Let us say the Christian, they have a theory. It's not a fact. Huh? I'm just going your way. But didn't you have a religion based on theory? You have no facts. The Big Bang is a theory. Tomorrow you will have a new theory and the old theory will be thrown in the shelf. <laughs> no, my friend. Uh, people, they can be uh, refute a leaf. I, I just refute your belief. 
because what you say to me it was a belief are you stupid or what when you say to me the Bible says that the earth has four corners and that means it's a flat that was your belief and I just got you busted so yes we can refute a belief and as long as you are saying nobody can refute a belief so how you can judge and says to me the earth is a flat in the Bible aren't you trying to refute me then are you stupid or what when you say to me the Bible says the earth is a flat was that for the purpose of refutation or the purpose of making poo poo you see you don't even you don't understand what you are typing for me maybe you are nervous maybe you are upset maybe you are stupid I don't know what's your business but if you are not typing those words for the purpose of refutation you are typing them for what purpose to be the bug in the bed bed bug so either you are trying to refute us or you are trying to be stupid choose one and the atheists they have a belief too you see if you think the Christian they have religion and you as an atheist you don't have religion that's stupid to say because you have a religion right well you know you see the 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 bible says that god always speak to us in, in 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 parables all the bible is like this there's a book is about it this is how ignorant you are all the stories jesus he spoke about is metaphorical parables so we can understand so it's not up to you to decide this is our belief and you just said you cannot refute a belief, right? So when you want to refute a belief, you idiot, you have to talk to us about what we believe, not what you believe. So now you bring me a verse and you think or you say, this is what I believe this verse is saying. But we cannot debate this way because we don't believe the verse saying that. <laughs> you know, when two people want to debate about the Big Bang, they debate about what the, those who believe in the Big Bang, not about something else they did not say. Do you understand, you idiot? If you say to me, I believe in the Big Bang, I will say to you, okay, tell me what is the Big Bang, and then I will refute you about what you believe. So I will not make my own Big Bang to refute you, you idiot. What you are doing, you make your own Big Bang, which have nothing to do with my Big Bang. And then you try to refute the Big Bang, which is not my belief. <laughs> Shanky, in China they they have a lot of things additional to Corona. They have they say he left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. So if you think you can come back as a horse, keep trying. Because you don't have the logic of anyone who have little logic. If you want to debate Aflaton, you debate Aflaton about what he he say, what he believe. Not about what Juha he said or what Muhammad said. Stupidity is amazing. Don't get married. Your wife, she will commit suicide. Now, do we have any Muhammadan? Yeah, we mentioned that in you know in the in the Bible it says the earth in in the shape of a globe. why you are interrupting interpreting the Quran you see Shanky uh, uh, here I have to say get lost guys when I did give interpretation for the Quran I never did I show Ibn Kathir I show Al-Qurtubi I show Al-Tabari get lost you are a stupid donkey I never did everything I said since I started today and every day I show in the screen what Muhammad said so you are a stupid official donkey and people they say to me why you use those words donkey they are donkeys it doesn't matter you're an atheist or what you're a donkey i never give interpretation for the quran never so what is in the screen if i'm giving interpretation for the quran so what i'm showing in the screen Don't come here again. Bring your daddy. <laughs> I 
adult only, please. I never give interpretation for the Quran when I did that. I read Al Qurtubi. Okay, what what today we saw in the screen? We showed Al Qurtubi explaining how Shaitan he have a penis. We show Muhammad saying things, the Quran saying. I never give interpretation. No, he's out already. No, no, no. It's it's fun. It's fun to spank those people. This guy now he is his bum is red. When I said that the Prophet, he, uh, uh, how Muhammad he made the Quran in Arabic. Okay, I showed you the verse saying Allah he never sent a message or a messenger except in the language of his people. Did I show that? Here we go. I did not give interpretation. So this need, even this one interpretation. And you can open any interpretation you want. Ibn Kathir al Qurtubi, this is what they are saying. Allah, He sent the messenger from the people in the language of the people so they understand clearly what He is saying. As simple as that. Okay. Muhammad received Quran as a sound of a bell. How that bell, Quran, became Arabic? Am I giving interpretation? No. I'm asking a question. <laughs> And those who lie about the Bible, they are a bunch of liars. There's many scientific things in the Bible, what I, but I'm not believing in the Bible because of science. We are not bankrupt, my friend, and your science is a joke. Look what Corona is dead. Do you see what Corona is doing? All those computers and all those scientists and, blah, 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 and little tiny virus make you poo do poop on your pant. Little tiny virus, what is your science? Your science, your science literally is a science of idiots. I don't trust doctors, I don't trust their science, I don't trust anything they do. Even the medicine they give you, it, this medicine kill you before make you live. Go right now and search for medicine in YouTube. You will find the commercial. Okay, what you have? You have a pain, you, you can't sleep? Take this medicine, but be aware that this medicine can cause heart attack, internal bleeding, uh, 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 pressure high, and they read, they read the negative things in extreme fast speed voice, so you will not understand. What is the science? Have you ever heard of one medicine they made for you? It doesn't have more side effect from the, from, from the disease itself. So you take a medicine for heart attack, and then you end with more dangerous illness, kidney failure, internal bleeding, brain disorder, chemical disorder, losing sensation, numb in your fingers, I mean, what is left? Numb in your lips, uh, you will hear voices in your ears. I mean, the, the guy, he went to fix his heart, he ended crazy hearing voices. All of this by your science. Science today is nothing but a practice of trying, the same as in the old days. They make a medicine, they try it anew, as, a, as if you are a rat. This medicine did not work, you go to the doctor, it did not work. So he gives you the second medicine. Oh, this medicine did not work. Okay, let's try this. They try on you until either you die or you get healed. Baby, my baby, you get healed by you because your immune system is good. The same as doing today with Corona. They are trying on them as if they are rats. What is your science? You know, uh, medicine today is way better than before, but it's still in the cave time. Millions of people die because of cancer, and cancer is it should be. I mean, it should be easy to solve. I mean, they understand what the cancer is, but they cannot stop it. Even the one who get like let us say recover, he it come back to him again, and then I mean, and if you if you get lucky, you recover from it.
You don't believe in vaccine? Well, you see, vaccine, the best vaccine is your natural body. Anything, anything, anything they, they try on you is not for your benefit. It's not for your benefit. It's your body should learn about these. This is why actually our bodies became more weak because our immune system depend in their medicine and then the viruses, they get stronger. They learn about our, our medicine and they, you know, they, 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 they change their structures. So their, our medicine is useless. In old days, a human being, he depend in his health, his strength. So when he get infected with the virus, either he live or he die, as simple as that. But that will give the human being a real experience with the real illness. And that make the body can survive more. You see, children who grow in a, in a, in a, a poor community, they have way better immune system from those who who sleep in a fancy bed, they take a shower twice a day. If you get out inside in the street, he gets sick so easy. You will see a kid in the Philippines, he have no issues. He is sitting in the sewage, literally. And he is way more healthy than little kid he live in America. Why? Because his body is exposed in a very early age to all hazard. So his body learned how to survive it. The real vaccine is you getting sick. For real. This is the real vaccine. As simple as that. <laughs> you know, I don't uh, I don't I don't take uh, uh, medicine. Like, uh, I let me show you. Actually, I have, I bought, uh, I bought Advil because I told you like my my arm was hurting me, and uh, and uh, like supposedly there is infl inflammation in my arm because I did something very tough with it. You know, I was doing boxing with the genie. You know, anyway, I did beat him very very much. I took his t-shirt too. Anyway, so. Uh, but then I I noticed there is no need. I mean, why am I? Why, I never. I, I don't use medicine. What for? I found that olive oil is the best to find to fight such an such, such a case. And really, I start adding more oil to my food, and it's gone. I mean, almost is. I I I have little tiny feeling still of pain. Olive oil. You take their medicine, it make you sleepy. You yawn when when it's not time for yawning, and you know Shaitan he laugh at you when you yawn. The Prophet or he said that you know. My friend, if a if a child he did not survive. Better than he grow and he spend the rest of his life taking medicine. You see, human human being today, by being dependent on uh, medicine, uh, okay, maybe you have bigger population, but your population is not healthy. Your population is not healthy anymore. You cannot survive little rain. If you walk a little bit in the rain, you, 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 you get sick badly. Let him get sick. Because all of this is a training for his body. So he will grow strong. Medicine is the worst thing to do, you know. It's not making us healthy. It makes us very weak, very vulnerable for disease and illness.
Sometimes people they send me messages, I have no idea what it means. Any Muhammadan? Hmm? Anyone? Anyone? Any half one? All right. Are you ex against va vaccine? I'm not against anything, my friend. This is your life. Take vaccine as much as you want. Take it in the morning. Take it afternoon. Take it afternoon. I mean, drink vaccine if you want. The right thing to do in life is to stay away from medication, especially when you are young, because your body already provided with an amazing defense system. Giving yourself medication will make you lazy body. Your immune system will relax. You are, you are saying literally, Hey, immune system, go take vacation. The medicine is here. And by time, your body will learn that he is your immune system. He is not needed because you always depend on medication. So it's a very stupid process. You are not training your body to be stronger. You are training your body to die, not to be strong. I don't mind like if I take something for for like uh, you know uh, flu you know but this is like antibiotic and crazy stuff and you know people there's people they they take drugs more than they take uh, food some medicine is absolutely unnecessary maybe depend on your situation that maybe you have a pain you know you want a painkiller okay it help you to kill your pain but I believe that all of this, the, 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 the good way to be stronger is not to depend in medication. And this is uh, something, you know, personal. Absolutely, you are wrong, CP. Okay, I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, me, myself, I don't take medication. I don't even, I don't have an, a file from a hospital. I don't have one. I hate to go to hospitals. I I hate to see doctors. I don't like them. I don't want to see them. And thank God, I'm very very okay with that. And you know, I believe if I go and you know if I go there, I will get sick. Even diabetes, you see, even diabetes, because wh why diabetes can affect you badly? Because simply, your body is not doing what it should should do. When you eat more than what you should eat. You got such an, a, a, an illness. When you eat too much and you don't work too much, okay, where the food will go? Where the sugar you made, you created in your body, where is it going to go? That is diabetes. So you should train your body to eat as you need before you arrive to the point where your body is, is, is not functioning. So you make your body go in the wrong direction and then you cry why your, your body became like this.
Go and see those farmers who work hard by their hands, not by the truck. How many of them they have diabetes? They spend the whole day working and you know, they eat, they, they burn it. You eat, you don't burn it. You should not eat more than what you can, more than what you need. Yeah, we use food. Yeah, but you know, no, but you don't use food no anymore. You live for food. People today they live for food. They know they they spend their days about food, and when they eat, they eat like monkeys, like donkeys, like elephants. Yeah, we are out of the topic, but no problem. I mean, what we were well, okay. There's not no, there's no customers. What we can do. You see, a little tiny bread can make you enough energy to walk and talk for the coming four or five hours. Do you eat tiny bread? No. <laughs> if you see how much you eat, it's crazy. I eat once every 24 hours. Once. Because I know if I eat more, I need to burn it. Anyway, yeah, you can eat in your house. No, I get a flu, but I recover from it. I don't take me, you know, like, I mean, if you take a medicine, maybe because it's embarrassing to go in the street and your nose is running. <laughs> I understand, but I don't, I don't. I don't take medicine. I don't like medicine. Uh, I uh, like. I I might take a, a painkiller if there is like an extreme pain, you know. But this have to be really extreme. Even like when I uh, uh, fix my my teeth, I did not uh, the what what they call it, the thing the 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 doctor he give it to you. It doesn't work with me anyway because I drink a lot of coffee. So he do work in my teeth without putting anything. And you know how painful it is. Still, I do it without anything. You know, I have patience to hold all this pain while he is working in my teeth, and I don't, I don't take medication. Call ultimate truth. This guy is not even a Muslim. And why you wanna call him? We have a lot of recording for him. Go watch it and die laughing. Don't he have enough of spanking? Can you chat about Muhammad being white? Well, Islam is a supreme white white supremacist cult. So they are so much proud about Muhammad being white. So they speak about his under arm is white, his belly bum is white, his face is white. And the Muslims in the judgment day, Allah will make them all white and the Christian, the Jews, the Hindus, the Buddhas, those who are not Muslim, Allah will make them black. We talked about that before. Why want to talk about it again? You can search my videos and you will find. And by the way, the, this person who called himself the ultimate fort, uh, each time we show him what the scholar they say, who said, who care about the scholars? <laughs> so why you call me? <laughs> <laughs> who cares about this guy? <laughs> who said that? <laughs> so, what, you know, this guy, uh, he have a mental illness. He sleep in his, his, you know, he open his camera, speaking in his bed with no respect to the people he's speaking to as an idiot. You know, I mean, have you ever heard of somebody speaking about religion, sleeping in his back in his bed? And then uh, anything you show him, he said, I don't believe in them. I don't agree with them. I don't I don't care for the scholars. Okay. You show him even dictionary. I don't care for dictionary. Like once he argued with me about the, the word Arab. I said to him that the, the uh, you know he said where it says in the Quran those are Bedouin. Where it says you know it says in there. The Arab is the people of the desert. Where it says that 
I show him that the, the guy he don't speak Arabic, and yet he wanna teach me Arabic. What I can do? Then I show him what his own Islamic translation says. And still he don't agree. So talk about what this guy is mentally ill. No, it's in front of you. He called me more than ten times just only about this. This guy because I you know I spank him badly. Hey, he don't agree with it. Okay, so what I will do with you? This is your Muslims, and this is what it is. Uh, no, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that, CP. <laughs> what I can't do more. We change the translation. The translator is still saying the same. He don't agree with it. So what I will do? Those people, they have they, they have mental illness. Some, they try to call me just because they want to... Like they want to show off in the front of people. I want to call CP and you don't want to call me. I'm not calling you because you're a joker. You're a kid. I gave you a chance many times to call me and to prove. He don't even let me talk. So we give you a chance. You call me first time, second time, third time. Okay, you made your point. If if you are proud about your conversation with me, go download all the videos, put them in your YouTube, in your YouTube channel if you are really brave. As long as you made the point. Do you have a suggestion for talking about polygamy to a Muslim man who dad has multiple wife? How I can convince him that this is wrong? You cannot convince any man that this is wrong because this is all is made for the benefit of the man. The only way you can convince him it's wrong if you make him leave Islam first. As long as a Muslim, this is this is a religion made by the man for the man. So we want to convince him that having many wives is bad who is the one having the benefit from it him is that against him so why he he will not even think it's not it's not harassing him is not bothering him it is something for his benefit sit in the couch he have two women in the right two women in the left yeah. all right this is why uh, muslim men they don't mind at all these rules because this is for their benefit. Men always, they like to be, uh, the man, he, he like to feel he is the rooster between a bunch of chickens. And Islam made the man the rooster. He says to him, okay, get a house, four bedrooms, four women. What do you want more? So you want the guy to stop practicing something for his benefit. Why? That is impossible. It's not about convincing him. It's about he himself. He is convinced it's true or it's, it's good or not. Still, he will not leave it. Do you think Muslim they practice things because they believe it is right? No. Is it right if you see a Christian in the street to spit in his face? Muslim, they are a human like us. They knew that this is bad. But Muhammad told him do it. It's for his benefit because it make him superior and get the benefit of harassing others, insulting others, taking the property of others, and he is the one get the benefit. Is this slavery something the Muslim don't understand that this is bad? He knew there's no human being in this earth do not know that slavery is bad. Because anything you don't wish for yourself, you know exactly it is bad. Yet they practice slavery. Why? Because the slavery make the Muslim feel superior because this is a supremacist cult believe that a Muslim is superior and the rest of a human being are not a human. They are like animals. Actually, the Quran says, Kal -an The Quran says that non-Muslims are the same as animals. There's a guy, his name... Uh, uh, I forgot from England, he made a video. He was recording in front of a bunch of cows and he stopped, he read a verse from the Quran. He says, brother, look what the Quran says about those Christians and Jews and Hindus and those kuffar, they are like animals. The video is there on YouTube. And this is their prophet teaching them that you are the best of mankind. And if you see someone is a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu, bring him and put the chains around his neck as if he's a dog. And then you will see an idiot saying to me, why you are giving interpretation for Islam? I'm not. This is in front of you. Right? 
What a dummy for real. This is why he is single. He does not believe in hadith. He is Quran only call him. Uh, first of all, a person who don't believe in uh, in hadith, he is not a Muslim. Take care. A person, you can ask anyone. You can search right now in Google. So the person who don't believe in the hadith, he is not a Muslim. Secondly, he don't believe in the Quran too. Because ultimate fault, he said, that he believed in the book of Salman, uh, what's his name? Uh, Rashad Khalifa. He read the translation, Rashad Khalifa. But Rashad Khalifa, he deleted verses from the Quran. And all the Muslims agree that Rashad Khalifa is not a Muslim. To the point they killed him. So this guy, you idiot, you, this is you, Mansoor. You are the same guy. You change your name to talk about yourself. You are the Muslim. The Quran says, anyone who don't follow the Quran and the Prophet, he is not a Muslim. How you can follow the Prophet? By following the Hadith. Where in the Quran it says don't do uh, uh, muta? Nowhere. The Quran says you do muta. Chapter four, verse twenty-four. So if you say I don't believe in the Hadith, then, he, then ultimate fault he have to practice muta. Do he practice muta? Did his mother rent herself to the neighbor for one night stand? If I say that to him, he will say, hey, see, he's using bad language. Hmm? The Quran made it clear. Oh, who you believe, obey Allah. How we obey Allah, the Quran. And obey the messenger. How we obey the messenger? By, by what he said to us. Any order he gave to you, you have to obey. So when you say, I don't believe in the hadith, okay, so where is Islam? Where in the Quran it says, uh, Pray five times. Nowhere. Where in the Quran it says how much the zakat is? Where in the Quran it says, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's, uh, let us say, how you practice the salah? I mean, all of Islam is not in the Quran. There is nothing is called moderate Muslims. You see, the, uh, I will give you an example. We are talking about this guy. This is an example of the denial of the Muslims because they are ashamed of the Hadith, so they pick up what they like. You see, this is this is this is a great, a great example about how Islam is collapsing, because if a Muslim he is proud about his religion, why he reached the point he says, "I deny this." You will not find one Christian deny one verse in the Bible. Is that correct, Christians? Not a single Christian, he can call himself a Christian, he can deny a single verse in the Bible. The Muslim, they deny Islam. Islam is Hadith and Quran. If you don't obey the Prophet, you are not a Muslim. For he is the one to be obeyed. How, how we obey what? Obey what he give you an order. We sent not a messenger, but to be obeyed in according with the will of Allah. And if the Muslim, they can say the hadith is not needed. Okay, you know, ask yourself, the Muslim Sunni, all of them agree that you have to follow the hadith. So this guy ultimate fart is what? He's a Muslim what? This is the major population of the Muslims. Now we go to the Shia. The Muslim Shia, they believe we have to believe in the Hadith. But they have their Hadith. So now we have 99% of the Muslims believe in the Hadith. So he's what, from the 1%? Actually, he's, not, he's less than 1%. That because they are ashamed. This, you know, the second you see somebody, he's a Muslim, he says, I reject the hadith. This is a good sign. This is not a bad sign. That's mean he noticed that this is embarrassing. You know what I mean? It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's a step to leave Islam. <clears throat> and Muhammad, he have to be the judge between them. Okay, so 
how he can judge if we don't obey him. Look how many times this chapter in the Quran, chapter 4, saying we have to obey him. You see, he is not saying obey the Quran. He says obey the messenger of Allah. Those who obey the messenger, they are in the company of him, which means they will go with him to heaven. So if this guy, he don't obey the, the prophet, which is in the hadith, he is not a Muslim. Everything in Islam is in the hadith. In the Quran, there is nothing. You can say, you see, when I was studying the you know, Islamic law, you know, uh, uh, getting my degree in, in law, uh, I noticed that there is nothing in the Quran. Actually, if you want to practice what is in the Quran, you will find that you 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 end the you, you end the uh, sick. As an example, uh. Let us see one, one verse as an example. This is Quran. Okay. Not a single Muslim, he practiced this verse on the Quran. So what we will do now? If we say we will not follow the Hadith, how we will know that this verse is not to be practiced? Are you getting my point? Muhammad, he made this verse. He noticed that this verse is a joke. People, they start laughing at him because this is stupid. If a man kill my wife, I kill his wife. If a free man, he kill a free man, we kill the free man. If a free man kill a slave, we kill his slave. That's stupid. <laughs> so if we say we will not believe in the hadith, that's mean we have to practice this verse. We have to practice a stupid verse in the Quran. The Muslims don't follow it no more. Why? Because in the in the in the hadith reported for them that this verse is abrogated. Otherwise, they have to practice it. And here, this this verse, by the way, is a great example of the stupidity of Muhammad, because how God, he sent a verse like this, and then he changed his mind so fast, so easy. Why? Because obviously he found that this is a joke. People, they start wondering, what kind of justice this justice is? So the guy, he killed my slave, I go and kill his slave. So now we have two victims. The guy, he killed my wife, I kill his wife. This is not eye for an eye, you idiot. This is not an eye for an eye. That is stupid. Any Muslim? This is why we don't waste our time with kids. You know, we give them a chance once, twice, that's it. This this kid, he called me more than 50, 60 times, and all of it in YouTube. People die laughing at him. But let me tell you what happened to those who call me and get spanked badly. You know, when a, when a person, he do gambling, and he lose. You know what happened to him? He want to play more. To retrieve his honor, his money, that is gambling. So they call me. They got spanked first time. They call me again, second time, third time, fifth time, sixth time, ten time, twenty time, fifty time. It doesn't matter how many times they call me, they got spanked harshly. And then Christian Prince, he decided, okay, I'm done with you. That's it. You know, I'm bored from this guy. Give me someone new. And then they go crazy. Because he is trying his best to retrain to retrieve his honor split all over the floor. Like this guy Fifi, you know, because I spanked him badly. I showed him, uh, you know, I, I made the videos for him and Mimi Hijab about Apostle the Prophet. They could and David would, you know, I, I I tortured them, I destroyed them. So they could not, you know, they, they don't dare to call me. Those are smarter than the Muslims. Those are smart. Because if they call me, it's going to be a disaster.
It's a gambling business. And you know, there is a, there is something about the the funny ones, funny Abdul, who try to be famous. So they go, they change their name, and they go and text and they say, "Why you don't debate this guy?" But he he is the same guy, because nobody talk about him except him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I want people to know about me, and I cannot go and say, "Guys, uh, listen to this guy." So what I do, I go to the chat and I say, "Hey, why you don't debate a Christian prince?" But I am a Christian prince. There is a there is a guy. If, I don't know if you remember the story. Uh, he was debating Sam Shamoon in a in a, a form, you know, like those form, like uh, you know, in the in the in the in the internet. It's a free. You make a name, username. So Sam Shamoon and this guy, I think his name is Amzawadi, something like this. He was debating Sam Shamoon, and he was beating him badly. And then the admins they notice that Sam Shamoon and this guy they have the same IP. So this Abdul, he created an account under Sam Shamoon. So he posts as Sham, Sam Shamoon, and then he log off. And then he go and log in again with his name, real name. And then he debates Sam Shamoon. But it's the same guy. And Sam Shamoon is not in that page. He did not even know it. And then suddenly, we saw like a message from the admin of that page saying, uh, we apologize. We found the fraud in the post. The same person. He is the same as Sam Shamoon. He is the same as this guy. So we did ban his account. No, he is not arguing himself. He is. He is. He is trying to show his friend that you see. I'm debating Sam Shamoon. I did beat him. Look. Look what the stupid things he's saying there. But he forgot the idiot that those forms when you post for the admin, they can see your IP address. So you cannot be Sam Shamoon who live in Michigan and be the guy who live in California at the same time. And the and the time between the two posts in one like two minutes or three minutes. And the same IP address. Now they have different method. So they go and they get my videos now and they do editing for them. They edit for the audio. And now supposedly they are winning against Christian Prince. Yeah. But it's the same guy debating himself. You are just editing my videos. Yeah. <clears throat> And by the way, just uh, I want to remind you, you see, I have my Skype, which is secure. But I warn anyone, don't take a file from anyone who claim to be Christian Prince. I never, I will never send you a file. I will never send you a picture. I will never ask you private information. I will never ask you your name. All right. So if you have me in your Skype, and if it happened ever, Somebody ask you for any or he send you files, never, never, never take them. All right? Never take a file from someone his name is a Christian prince. I don't do that. And actually, I advise you not to take files from anyone. Even if somebody send you a picture, like you can still view it in Skype. But don't download it. You can take a snapshot. And this way you are not downloading the file. All right. Be careful. They are, you know, they do a lot of evil stuff. They are willing to do anything. Well, you know, the, the recitation of the Quran, first of all, the seven dialect is not seven recitation, it's seven Quran. You see, if it's the same Quran, different dialect, then it should be, 
the same book, but we read it in different dialect. You know what I mean? Because dialect is about how to say the like uh, the sound. But if it's different words, that's not different dialect. That is different language. Do you understand me? So the Quran was not sent in seven seven dialect. It's sent in seven Quran. It is seven Quran. They are different. There's different words. And the reason for this trick Muhammad he came with because he himself he cannot recite the Quran twice correctly. So when they notice that he say a verse and then second day he say it differently, he have to come with an idea to cover his bum. So he said Allah, he know Allah he sent him Jibreel and he told his people that my people cannot take it. Okay, why? <laughs> you know what I mean? Why they cannot take it? How the Muslim today they are reciting one Quran? You see, based on this story, Islam is not complete unless we have seven Quran. Where are they? Read it. I'm not going to read it for you. Read it. Take your time. This is Sahih uh, uh, Ibn da Abi Dawood. And we can saw it like this is a Sahih Hadith. See? Sahih, authentic. Muhammad, he is negotiating with the, uh, Allah, and Allah, he keeps saying to him, my, a big burden to Allah, and forgiveness, my community has no strength to do so. To do so what? To have one Quran. I mean, what? so what Quran, what two Quran will do? If one Quran cannot do it, what two Quran? I mean, the idea itself is a proof that Muhammad is a fraud. Because if Allah is, you see the Muslim, they say the Quran is a miracle. Don't they say that? Miracle in the language. So how it's a miracle in the language, but people, they cannot understand the Quran if it's in one language. And we are talking about Arabic. It's like when you hear language, you think you are going to speak Chinese. No. Seven Arabic. But don't they understand the Arabic? They, yes, they do. So how the Quran is a miracle, but it is so bad to the point, I beg Allah burden and forgiveness, my community has not the strength to do so. <laughs> Do you see the stupidity? But Muhammad, he have to come with such an excuse because uh, he, how he can explain to them why he cannot repeat the same verse twice. Okay, to make it simple for you, I told you a story yesterday and now today I'm going to tell you the same story, but I, I change it. So people will say, what? He's lying. Why he is not saying the same? Ah, I have to come with it. Oh, Allah, he sent it to me, the story, in seven, seven ways. Seven ways? And why seven? I mean, what, what about uh, three? Right? So Allah has commanded you to recite to your people the Quran in one dialect. Upon that, he said, I ask Allah burden and forgiveness. My people are not capable of doing it. So why Allah did not send we did not send seven in jail to Jesus? Why Allah did not send seven Torahs to Moses? You see, we are going with their logic. I mean, this is a stupid story. Is that because the Arab and I am an Arab are slow? So we need seven Quran? Okay, where is the seven Quran right now? Who is the Indonesian he knew seven Quran? But the story is very simple. This guy, he cannot repeat his fart sound twice correctly. Each time he fart, it sound different. So he have to come with such a lie. And what kind of a prophet he correct his God? So your God, he says to you, I will send you one Quran. You say to him, no, you are wrong. One Quran is not good. Is not enough because this is what the verse is saying and then the angel come and he say okay Allah send you a second Quran he says no it's not enough we want more he sent in third and then he sent him a fourth and then he sent him fifth and then he sent the sixth and then Muhammad he agree with seven here we go seven eleven
And the funny, the Muslim, they say to us that the Quran is preserved. And here, here you notice that, uh, uh, that, that this story here is showing us that Muhammad is, he knew better than Allah. Because do Allah knew that one is not good? Look, Allah has commanded you to recite the people in one dialect. This is the Muslim translation. Okay. Who is the one that agree Muhammad? That's mean Allah is wrong. Imagine if Jesus he says to you, I will I will send you seven books, seven seven dialect Bible. What is that, man? You know what? I heard, brother, that God he sent to Moses the Ten Commandment in seven dialect. <laughs> what a fraud. What a fraud. And this is why. When a Muslim he see those stories, which is a must to believe in, he go in denial. It is a step to leave Islam. So he say, I'm not going to believe in those stories. Those cannot be true. This is embarrassing. This is a story is no different from Muhammad when he is saying that Shaitan he take care from the anus of a Muslim when he pray. Embarrassing. I mean, imagine what kind of a prophet he says such a statement. Shaitan, take care from your anus when you pray. Or Shaitan, he sleep in your nose. Or Shaitan, he, he, he piss in your ears. Or Shaitan, he jump in your mouth when you are yawning. I mean, this is a story or this is a statement. It should not even be said to children in the age of fourth or fifth years old. They will laugh at you. I remember once I was talking to a, to, to a kid. She is, I think maybe she is like six years old. So I said, uh, uh, you know, uh, do you want to, uh, do you want to use this broom to fly with it? And she said, <laughs> yeah, light. <laughs> you think I'm stupid? There's nothing. It's called magic. It's a lie. She's just six years, seven years old. I thought I'm like I'm going to her age, speaking to, speaking to her in her age, and she got me busted. So then you think I'm stupid? There is nothing. It's called like the you know, that's, 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 that's a cartoon. I was looking at her like what? <laughs> so even this kid, six years old, she did not believe it, and she was looking at me like, "Well, are you stupid or what?" And then she told her mom, "Mom, he's lying to me. <laughs> he's lying to me." Yeah, she, she got me busted, you know. I thought the cartoon is working, it's not working no more. Here we go, Muhammad, the oldest stories, you know. How somebody in the age of 60, he believe in such a garbage? <clears throat> the Messenger of Allah said, when one of you awake awakes up from his sleep he must blow his nose three times for shaitan spend the night inside in one of his nostrils i mean shaitan all the five stars hotels the palaces of caesar the houses in greece in italy i mean he will sleep in the nose of the muslim I mean, I'm, I'm truly convinced this is a true story. And look here, it says, I don't know if you can see it, it says, agreed upon. Did, did, did you see the statement here? It says, agreed upon. I mean, they agreed upon that. I mean, come on. <coughs> do you see it? Do you see it? Agreed upon. Like, yeah, all of us, we agree upon this. True story, brother. This is what the Muslims agreed upon. I 
I mean, Shaitan, he could not like okay sleep in the side of the pillow, pillow, okay sleep in the empty bedroom. No, he sleep in your nose. I mean, how Muhammad he was to wanted to tie him up to the column of the mosque if he is so small to the point he go inside your nose and you don't even feel him. Agreed upon. It's not a, like we cannot. Uh, we we can. You cannot find anyone disagree with this story. It's true. Hmm. If there is any Muslim here, he didn't agree upon. No way. agreed upon didn't we show you that they said that shaitan he have a penis in the right leg and a, and a vagina in the left leg okay how this guy is so small to the in the size of a booger and yet he have a penis and vagina and he fight with muhammad and muhammad he capture him and if he's so small and you want to tie him up to the column. How shaitan he can have sex with Muslim women if he is the size of a booger? Because the Muslim, they believe shaitan he can have sex with Muslim women. Okay, how he is small to, to go inside your nose. You see, if a little tiny insect, a mosquito, go inside your nose, you go crazy. This is shaitan. That means he's so small to the point you feel nothing. <clears throat> yeah exactly it's agreed upon by those who they are the scholars <laughs> people of knowledge <laughs> and we have to come to the conclusion it's agreed upon you know and look I don't know if you notice with me here there's something maybe you are missing you cannot get rid of shaitan you cannot do eviction for shaitan from your nose unless you blow your nose three times did you notice that like you cannot go in the morning you serve shaitan and notice from the sheriff say hey get out no you have to blow your nose three times if you do it twice shaitan is still there did you notice three times three times is out two times is still in there Okay, what is the what is behind this trinity in Islam? How this is became a three time? What what is the secret? What is the what is the weakness of Shaitan when you do it three time? He he get loose. Stupidity. If you remember the video, let me let me see if I can find it. The guy he was speaking to the Muhammadan in the in a like uh, conference. He told him when you go uh, when you go to the bathroom, Shaitan he play with your bum, and you go and you want to do it like eh, eh, it's not coming, eh, eh. and the Muslim they start laughing dying. So he said to them, the Hadith says, the Hadith says, which means shut up. The Prophet says that show respect. The hadith says, yeah, the hadith says so. <clears throat> hmm. Let me see if I can find it. There we go. Go watch it. Make Shaitan fart. Remember that text, you know. Make Shaitan. I wish I can play it for you. You would die laughing. And the Muslim believe in that. So what this guy is saying? When you go in the bathroom, Shaitan and his wife they go inside the anus of a Muslim, and they block it. Why? Because he did not say the prayer before he go in the bathroom. 
if you're going, he will explain to you when you go in the bathroom. If you say the prayer, you became invisible. So Shaitan, he wanna play with your anus, but he cannot see it. He can't find it. I'm not kidding, guys. Go and watch it. You know, I wish I can play it for you. I can't know to explain how I'm, how I'm going how I'm going to draw this to explain to you. <laughs> and you know, and the funny when they get start laughing, he says, the, "The prophet says, the prophet said," which means like, "Come on, hello, it's not me who's saying that; it's the prophet." Anyway, after we finish, go and watch it and download it and share it with your friends and your Facebook because that will bring you a lot. You know what? I'm going to download it right now and I will show it. I will post it in my Facebook. Hold on. <coughs> That's a good one to uh, to have, you know. <coughs> let me start downloading. Let them let people die laughing. All right, I'm downloading now. I will post it later in my Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, I search for this title, you know. Search for this title. Let me show it to you again because this will show you the whole video. All right. Make shaitan fart, and this is posted by a Muslim uh, uh, channel. So, like, they are not ashamed of it; they are proud about it. You know, yeah. It's like, yeah. This is knowledge, my friend. So, look for this title. Make shaitan. You know, just type it as it is in your YouTube, and you will find it. <clears throat> Yeah. And you know, how in the world a human being can believe in such a garbage that if you don't go in the bathroom and you say those words, shaitan will play with your anus. I mean, what? A conspiracy. This is a religion of conspiracy. Shaitan play with your anus. Shaitan round himself around your penis. Shaitan he sleep in your nose. Shaitan he he piss in your ears. I mean, what is this? And if this is a prophet of God teaching, I mean, stupidity. Who? What? What the prophet of stupidity would do? And now we are in the year two thousand twenty, and people talk about science supposedly. This is science. Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop here, and you guys watch it and enjoy. Uh, uh, you, you see, this is the benefit of listening to my videos. Here we go. I just give you a trick to protect your anus when you when you go to the bathroom. Otherwise, we know what's happening. And by the way, you Muslim, can you can make for, can you make for us a, a proof that there is really shaitan play with your anus? Can a Muslim like record it? I mean, put the camera there. Go and buy a GoPro, a GoPro uh, camera. Put it in the toilet seat. Let us see shit on. And you can record in slow motion too. And post it in YouTube. Prove that this is true. Or you know what? You can take, you can, you can record video before and after because if shit on playing there, I mean, a lot of things will happen. Don't you want to make us believe the same as the cat don't step over the Quran, brother? Alhamdulillah, brother, the cat don't step over the Quran, brother. What a fraud. Put a camera in your toilet seat and let us see before and after. Like Mimi Hijab anus before and Mimi Hijab anus after. And you will see if it's getting bigger, getting irritated, getting red. Uh, getting bleeding. I mean, something will happen because Shaitan, he played with a screwdriver there. By the way, do Shaitan use his teeth there or what? What a stupid cult. 
And after all this stupidity, you will see somebody saying, I want to convert to Islam. No comment. Uh. Anyway, I hope uh, with this uh, uh, wisdom today we end uh, uh, teaching you and uh, I hope you learned something how to protect your bum when you go to the bathroom because this is very good for security, brother and sisters. So don't forget, brother. And you have to say a certain words, by the way, in Arabic. If you say it in English, it doesn't work. Look at this. Before you enter the bathroom, imagine if we make women do that in the airport. Man, nobody will catch his airplane. I mean, without this prayer and the bathroom of, for women is long line like a train. So imagine we say to the women, you have to make this prayer for security. And now, you, because you have to say it before you step in the bathroom. You cannot say it in advance. No, before you step, like it's your turn now to get in. Now you have to say it. So you can go invisible inside the, the, the bathroom. So now we want to practice this in the airport. We have 100 women. You see, the bathroom for men is empty. There's nobody. Bathroom for men in the airport is empty. Thank God I am a man. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> bathroom for women. I mean, what's happening in there? Are they going to do shopping? I mean, what is exactly is inside this bathroom? <laughs> I mean, there is no way those women, they are going for the bathroom because, what, I mean, by the time you get in, you will lose it. I mean, you will do it in the street. So, long line. And now we give them the advice. You have to say this prayer. The bathroom of the airport will be blocked for the coming century. That's it. I think in this scenario, they will transform half of the airport to be bathroom for ladies with mirrors. Don't forget, you know, a toilet seat in the bathroom for women is not necessarily, but the mirrors is the most important thing. <laughs> I'm just joking. Anyway, guys, I uh, <laughs> I better stop here before I get, I get shot by some women. They are dangerous and they have long nails, as you know. You know, yeah, you do. They do. They, <laughs> they absolutely do have long, long knees and ever, never, never fight with them. They are, they, yes, they are soft. Yeah, they have, uh, you know, like uh, makeup. But when, when it's come to reality, they are cats. Rrr. So be careful, okay? <laughs> Secure yourself, speak nice to them. You better be, uh, you know, be careful than sorry. All right. I am, I'm brave now to talk about them like this because none of them is in the front of me. So I'm safe. They don't even know my address. They don't know how I look like. So I can say it. I'm relaxed. I'm not going to be worried. But if you are in the front of them, be careful. They are dangerous. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Oh. <coughs> I think we have uh, we have enough for today for safety reasons otherwise we might make some women angry now and God knows what will happen um, I will catch you someday you will catch me <laughs> all right <clears throat> anyway guys i want to say really thank you feel free to download the video we, we are not keeping the videos for long and as you see this is a very stupid cult or what we are trying to do here is just to share with you some of the stupidity of this cult 
uh, and uh, you know it's up to you to make decision about it somebody saying my dad asked me about a zaim in pal talk i don't know him i know that i i, I saw this guy before in pal talk but i don't know who's he i don't know yeah anyway guys thank you very much and i hope uh, you uh, you uh, you learn something and please do me a favor really download this video and post it in your whatever I mean social media you have make shaitan fart funny reminder uh, I advise you actually to change the title you know because when you make when you download a video and you keep the same title and then somebody else download it and you keep the same title then all the videos appear on one page when people search for them so make your own title you know you know whatever like let the farting inspire you okay like close your eyes and think about farting like romantic moment <laughs> or think about you in, sitting in the toilet seat huh and like get the inspiration from Allah a Muslim he asked a sheikh in the TV he said to him can I take the Quran with me in the bathroom to read when I'm you know the Muslim he, the sheikh he said no you cannot it's haram to take Quran inside the bathroom so the guy he said okay but I memorized the Quran so what I would do with the Quran in my head <laughs> what a stupid cult all right guys take care may the Lord bless you and with the Christ we are saved we are saved and we are safe we are smart we are intelligence we are human who have a brain this is why we are different from all other creatures what make us different that we are not programmed insect we have a brain to think and make decision and there is no way anyone he have little intelligence he will not see that this is all is madness and garbage it is not even a human to think in such a way. It's like somebody, he decided to eliminate his brain and to put it in the side, in the shelf, or to rent it out. That is not what God, he wanted for us. He gave us a lot of ability, which no creature in this universe have. All of this to believe in this, all the gifts is given to us. I mean, how a human being, he abused, the gift of God how silly he can be to be fooled by a fool like Muhammad I remember this is a statement always I say it's my own statement if a fool like Muhammad can fool you how fool are you how fool are you when we are Christians we cannot be fooled by such a fool Thank you. God bless and see you soon again.